Swifters, this is Prof G. Let's learn how to use Swift Package Manager. So in my courses, we take advantage of Swift packages. These are software libraries written by others. They're great. They save us a lot of work. They're usually professionally managed and updated. And we'll use Google Maps, for example, so that we can easily use Google Place Autocomplete to look up places. We use Google Cloud Firestore, among other packages. And we usually install these using CocoaPods. Now, I teach so many students that every once in a while, a student will have a persistent problem with CocoaPod installation and things just aren't working. It's likely a wayward configuration problem something on their Mac. They're struggling to get CocoaPods to work. So I put together this video to show an alternate way to install Swift packages using the Swift Package Manager or SPM and avoid having to use CocoaPods. Now SPM support is built right into Xcode and it's nice because you don't have to worry about installing CocoaPods software, preparing a pod file, working with a terminal, but SPM is newer than CocoaPods. Now Apple's been supporting this as a new standard. It's been built into Xcode for a while, but not all of the popular CocoaPod packages have been rewritten to support Swift Package Manager manager. Now, at the time that I'm recording this, Google Maps for iOS has not been rewritten by Google to support SPM. But fortunately, a kind developer named Yasser Inc. under the GitHub account named YA Technologies has adapted Google Maps for Swift Package Manager. So I'll show you how we can go ahead and install this SPM package that YA Technologies has put together. But this technique should work for any package written to support SPM. So when Google eventually comes out with their version, you can just swap out the GitHub URL I'll show you for YA Technologies and put Google's in there. And by the way, this technique should work for any package you want to install, as long as you have a valid URL that you can put into Xcode to grab a properly written Swift Package Manager package. Now, just a quick heads up. In most cases, you won't need the additional software called Carthage that we're about to install, but YA's implementation requires Carthage to compile the XC frameworks files that this package uses. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. You don't need to know what it means. Just follow these steps to install Carthage. Everything after this should work for any Swift package manager as long as you've got the URL for it. Now you can download Carthage software by searching for Carthage for Mac. And when you go to the project's GitHub page, scroll down to the section named Install Carthage. And under the Installer bullet, click the Release link. Then on this page, scroll down to the very bottom, find the link named Assets. It might not look like a link, but it is a link, so click it. And then click on Carthage.pkg. Now you'll be prompted to save this. I'm gonna save mine right to the desktop. And there you can double click to run the .pkg file to install Carthage but you'll probably get a message saying that this can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer. That's because we downloaded this outside of the App Store, but just click OK. We can open system preferences. Under security and privacy, you can see this message in here that says Carthage.pkg was blocked. You should be able to click open anyway. Now there is a chance that you'll have to click on the padlock to open this up beforehand and enter your password, but then you should be able to open this file and install it the way that you would via any other software using a .pkg file. When you run the installer, just click the disk that you want to install it on. I'm going to install for all users on my computer. Click continue, install, approve with a password, and it's installed so you can close. Now this next step isn't necessary, but if you want to verify that Carthage is installed, you can open your terminal program command space to open up Spotlight, type in terminal, press return. Then at the prompt, you can type in Carthage space version and press return. Mine happens to be 0.31.1. You see this shows up here. Yours might be a later version, but we verified that Carthage is installed so we can quit out of the terminal and we're ready to work with our Xcode project. Now, before we can install a package in a project, we first need to create an Xcode project. So I'll launch Xcode. I'm going to give this project the name Google Place Autocomplete Demo. And now let's install our Swift package for Google Maps. So to do that, let's head up to the File menu, select Swift Packages. Then we'll select Add Package Dependency. Now, your box won't have these different projects underneath, but you will have a search box. And this is where you want to enter or paste in the URL of any Swift package that you want to install on this project. So the one that we're going to be installing here is is entered as you see it on screen. So remember, case is important. This is going to be github.com slash capital Y, capital A, technologies, that's all one word, slash capital G, Google, capital M, maps, dash, capital S, capital P. Now, once you have that entered just as you see it here, you can press return or click on next. Now, this screen allows you to set rules for version, branch, and commit, but in most cases, the defaults will work great, so we'll just select Next, and it might take a minute to resolve and get the packages over the internet, but next you should see this screen that allows you to select the different package projects and targets. The targets are going to be fine for us. Click X next to the different projects that you want to install. In this tutorial, we're just going to use Google Places, but if you were using other packages, feel free to select them. 
then click on finish, and that's it. You'll see in the project navigator, you now have a Swift package dependency section. You shouldn't have to touch this, but we can see the Google Maps was installed, so everything is installed fine. Now at this point, if you don't want to stick around and see how I actually implement and verify Google Place autocomplete is working, you're done. Just remember, unlike using CocoaPods when you had to click on the XC workspace file to load up your project, we don't have an XC workspace project here. So with Swift Package Manager projects, you just double click the old Xcode proj file to open your projects. Oh, you can also throw the Carthage.pkg into the trash. We don't need that anymore either. Now this video is just about using Swift Package Manager to install Google Places as a Swift package in Xcode, but just to show you that this works, I've quickly built an app with a button, and if I click it, you can see that Google Place Autocomplete runs. Now this interface that popped up here is given to us as part of the Google Place Autocomplete package. So you just enter a place, Google will show all the places that match in its database of places, and we can return information about that place if we click on it. I'm just showing the place name, address, latitude, and longitude here for demonstration demonstration purposes, but there's a lot more info that you can get. But if you want to learn how to more fully implement Google Place Autocomplete, we use that in both the Weather Gift Weather app and the Snacktacular Restaurant Review app. Full build tutorials for both of those apps are on my YouTube channel. Both of these have their own playlist, and they're also part of the master playlist of the over 100 videos that are free on my website for the Zero to Full Stack University course that I teach. So if you haven't visited that channel yet, go ahead and check it out. You'll also find maker projects, iOS-controlled robotics projects, and more. As you probably heard everybody say, likes and subscribes help me out by surfacing content for others, so kindly consider doing so if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you, and stay swifty, my friends.